So after 20 years, Sylvester Stallone finally returned to one of his most iconic roles and delivered one of the most brutal action films ever made with 2008's Rambo. After spending several years in northern Thailand operating a longboat on the Salween River, ex-Special Forces veteran John Rambo reluctantly agrees to carry a group of Christian missionaries into war-torn Burma. Soon John forges a relationship with Sarah Miller, who cracks open his disheartened exterior to allow him to care about someone or something yet again. However, when the aid workers fall under a brutal attack, and are captured by ruthless National Army soldiers, Rambo leads a group of battle-scarred combat-hardened mercenaries on an epic last-ditch mission to rescue the prisoners at any cost. So the fourth film in the Rambo franchise was released into cinemas on January 25th of 2008, which is exactly four months shy of the 20th anniversary release of Rambo 3, and the thing actually grossed off a $50 million budget, over $113 million worldwide, making a pretty solid success there. And it was something that was falling off of the success of another revitalization of Sloan's career with Rocky Balboa. But this Rambo film was actually greenlit before that film came out, despite this one coming out after that one was released. But the whole thing with Rocky Balboa was like, it gave Stallone a really strong sense of credibility in terms of investors and the filmmaking community and audiences and everything like that, where he kind of had a bit of a slip slide type of thing in his career since like the mid 90s and couldn't really get as much traction as he used to as a box office draw and all these different things. But once he came back and did Rocky Balboa and showed that he was still a fantastic filmmaker, a fantastic actor, really had the chops to really kind of bring something very special back into theaters. Gave you another thing with Rambo here. It was such a thing that since the late 90s, they had been trying to get a fourth film going, but Stallone really never had quite the idea to really kind of have a good, satisfying story for the character, knowing where he left off in the third film and kind of maintain the integrity of what he always had with the character there, the certain brooding nature, the introverted type of quality with the character and all these little things that kind of built up between the trauma and all these different things they went through in the war and all the other films. You need to have a story that kind of grasps into those concepts and he did have another idea before they landed on the one they did have for this film, which apparently is the same idea that is being used for Rambo Last Blood. So he's set down in Mexico and Rambo goes off into a certain adventure to reclaim a, a loved one that kind of got lost in a long weekend down in Mexico and deals with drug cartels, stuff like that. So that apparently is being used now for the new film coming out in 2019. But he wants something that felt like it, 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 it didn't move that far forward that he'd gone back to America and kind of settled back into things. He still wanted to have a bit of a bridge from where you had him before to where he could go next. And where they land up in is this whole entire story of this revolution, these brutal situations going on in Myanmar and Burma and all this type of stuff. And it's just one of those things where they research it, they talk to refugees over there with the producers and all the other filmmakers involved in this whole thing to really understand their stories and understand what's going on. To get a solid, realistic sense of what was happening to convey that in the story and bring a very much strong realism to everything that happened there. And just like in First Blood, where it, that film just brought so much of a spotlight onto what those Vietnam veterans have been going through, all these different things, they could kind of bring that same attention to this situation going on halfway around the world and everything. So it's such an interesting thing that they decide to kind of pinpoint that idea and, and kind of just in a convenient sense of where you left off with Rambo, where at the beginning of Rambo 3, he is set up in Thailand, which is right next door to where these events are happening. So by random coincidence, it fit where the character left off before. And it felt like it, it was very poignant to have that kind of character and where he is in this film be landed in that situation and have to deal with what this whole thing is going on with this revolution, these brutal killings, all those different things to put him into that scenario and have him in a very real world context that we can kind of view as a very gritty and graphic and a horrible situation. So it's a very interesting thing. And one of the really kind of intriguing things about this thing is that 
Stallone wasn't originally going to direct the film. They got another director onto the movie to kind of helm it. And there are being conflicts and creative differences and stuff like that. And so he left the production and Sloan was like, what do I do now? Because he didn't really have like a directorial vision in his head about the film itself. But they kind of approached it as like, well, what if this was actually like directed by Rambo himself? If you employed the psychology and the mentalities and, and the sort of unstable type of feeling that the character kind of has and kind of inject that into the way the film was shot and really kind of constructed and all these different things. They gave him an inroad into figuring out how the film is shot, how it's constructed, all these different things. And so that just drove the entire narrative forward. And it was so much like kind of a, a, a slight return to how the first film was kind of done in a certain way because the first film, they're up in this mountainous region and, and, and it's just this uneven terrain. It's terrible circumstances. Now they're shooting in Thailand, they're shooting in Mexico, a few little things in Arizona and California, but mainly it's all overseas and it's like 113 degrees Fahrenheit in this humid jungle where it's all uneven ground. It's like, and they're terrible, miserable conditions. You got snakes and scorpions and all these different things all over the place. It's horrible conditions. But somehow, because of Sly's mentality that he is such a, a driven, artistic force in a certain way, knowing that he's both an actor and director and be able to relate to people on both sides of the camera and being an actor in the film and being the director as well as a co-writer on the film, he had so much kind of drive for this whole thing, a certain way to just approach it as like, even if you're exhausted, if you're tired, you're worn out, burned out, got nothing left in the tank, he has this, this forward sort of pro thought process and everything like, if you're looking back on this film 20 years later or whatnot and just seeing, man, if I just gave that extra little effort, if I just gave that extra little something there, man, it would have been so much better. So it's like he imparted that wisdom on everyone else in the film that knowing how brutal the conditions were, how miserable everything was, everyone's sweating buckets everywhere and got 500 people on the crew and everything. It's a big fucking production in the middle of this unrelenting jungle. He was such a general in this whole situation to really kind of push the entire production forward on such a, a, a good level of camaraderie and everything. He was a guy who just pushed forward that he's working in front of the camera, he's working behind the camera, he's looking at dailies, he's making phone calls, he's coordinating with everyone, and he's making script changes as well almost daily. This guy was just a machine moving through this whole thing because like it's all on his head and whatnot, and he's, and he's so far along in his career up to this point that he's directed a couple of films already. He's put his stamp on things and he's got so much experience behind him to know how to handle the situation. They just charged forward and found the energy, so whatever it was, to make this film look as good as it could, make it come out as well, and give it such a strong tone to it as well that certainly like Rambo 2 had a bit of a over-the-top cartoony sense. Rambo 3 was, was a much stronger action picture, but kind of lacked in certain areas in the story this one's got the most intense sort of tone to it in a certain way that because you got such a brutal gory graphic sense to the action in the film you've got this wonderful somber serious tone that you get such a, a reflection and introspection on the character of Rambo here you see so much of what he's gone through and what's kind of affected him where he is in his place in the world at this point in time where he's very disconnected. He's very much kind of like a a man kind of broken in a certain way. They, that, that the world just doesn't mean anything to him. That he's kind of lost hope in any sort of general humanity. That he feels like nothing that he's ever done in his life has ever really made a difference to the overall scope of the world. And it feels very hopeless to him in a certain way. And it's a great way to see how the character moves through the situation. How the world does kind of almost reinforce what his sensibility is, but how the entire film kind of shifts for him in a certain way that you see how the experiences and the people he connects with this whole thing and all the little things that kind of brings him back kind of full circle in a certain way to see where he's been, see what he's been kind of detaching himself from and find something to really care about in his entire situation that Stone does a fantastic fantastic performance in this film. He's absolutely amazing in this role. That everything is kind of, again, maintained that integrity through all the, all the, all the films. Even though the tone is kind of going a little bit off on, off on different ends of the spectrum, 
is always maintain a certain quality, a certain integrity, a certain dignity about the character of Rambo that I think so much that this film just zeroes in on it so absolutely perfectly. From everything you've seen him go through, all these things kind of come together. And it comes together so well because Stone's a fantastic filmmaker. He's a fantastic actor. He puts together an amazing package for this film. Being a guy run the show as director and being the main star of the whole film and having to deal with all the brutal conditions this film comes with and having to deal with every little thing of production logistics, all these different things that set up camera shots, all these different things, and still work with the entire cast. This is an amazing job for Stallone that he did here. And I really like getting Julie Benz in this whole film because I, I really much know her. A lot of people would know her from Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel as the Vampire Darla. She did a wonderful job there, and she also appeared in Punisher Warzone later this year, also from Lionsgate. But in this thing, I really think she does a fantastic job. I love the sort of compassion that she has as this, obviously a character with a big heart to kind of go in as a missionary to help all these ailing, wounded people in this war zone. But she's got a fantastic conviction as well that she's very much staunch in her, what she believes and what she, she feels she needs to do in this situation and imparting that and kind of driving that home with Rambo that she's trying to kind of lock something within him, kind of lock that, that repressed humanity that he has inside him that again, he does care, and that's what she does perceive about him, that he does care so much. That he is not such a, a, a coarse type of character to just take the money and drop them off in a war zone. He does care enough about these people to, not, to want to keep them away from danger in his own sort of uh, shut-off type of way. But her and Stallone have such great chemistry. They just bring off fantastic scenes in this whole thing. I just love how they work together and just all these little moments that they have to kind of drive for this sort of connection, this relatability between the two characters. They build something and the character of Sarah here just kind of breaks up a little bit of that heart that Rambo has to have him care enough to kind of go off and, and become that soldier again to do what he has to do to rescue these people from dire circumstances. So it's like, it's a wonderful portrayal of that character. And I also like Paul Schultz's Michael Barrett here, the guy who's engaged to Sarah, he's got he's got a he's a bit more of a righteous type of guy in a certain way. He's like he's very much an idealistic guy that obviously the mentality he kind of has is a little bit outside of the true reality of what's going on here, despite being here several times before that. He's a guy who just determinately believes in what he's doing and doesn't think that violence has any place in anything that they're doing despite the fact when they get pulled over by the pirates and they're gonna probably take away Sarah and do terrible things to her and probably kill the rest of them. He's very much staunch in not kind of endorsing the fact that Rambo has to kill these guys to survive. So it's a, a interesting idealistic mindset that he has there, but the actor is so damn good in the role that I love later on when you get the character of Lewis there, the guy who's headed up the mercenaries, that when he gets wounded, he goes into action as a doctor to help him. And even when you get into the climax of the film, that he does kind of have to defend himself. He has to take some kind of action to keep himself alive. So it's like they still have these little beats, these little moments that have to make the character come into the foreground and, and take action in the moment there when things are going very badly. So it's like it's really good moments to really have those pieces of the characters progress through the entire story here. Like I said, the character of Lewis there, the head of the mercenaries, portrayed by Graham McTavish, I love this guy in this film. He's a really solid character. I just love the fact that he's, he's a guy who's very upfront. He's, he's no shits given bullshit type of guy. It's like he's just so much a perfect mercenary here. He's not here for idealism. He's not here as a patriot. He's not here as a bleeding heart. He's not here for anything else except to be paid to do a job. And you see this sort of mentality that, that he's a guy who will get a job done to a certain extent but won't risk any more than he has to for it. I love the fact that he's both kind of a guy you can be a little bit abrasive towards but he still goes for it in the moment. That when he has to go into action, he goes into action. And when things are set forward to a certain path, by Rambo there, when he intervenes in this entire situation, he carries on. He's still strategizing with people and still moving forward. He's still making sure that people can survive as well as they possibly can. So it's wonderful to have this character who's, again, who's a bit of a bit of an asshole in a certain way. You kind of perceive him as a bit of a hard-ass, jackass motherfucker. 
but he, you, you understand the character. He's here to get a paycheck. But he's got an ex-wife and a couple of kids. He's got to pay for stuff to keep them going and alimony, whatever the heck he's doing. So he is a realistic character that way. And I like the fact that you have that. And the rest of the mercenaries have a little bit of something as well. They all have a little bit of a trait. They have a little bit of a something going on. A certain charisma, a certain character, a certain personality. to make them at least a little bit identifiable in this entire ensemble of these guys. I just like that you have this type of quality in these characters. That you have a little bit of a moment there to kind of get introduced to them. Then you move forward in the plot and you see how they react. And they all have their own certain ways of dealing with the situation. The characters in general are just really good. They're really solid type of things. No one's written outside of the bounds of reality. Any type of convincing reality. The groundedness of the film is continued on through every performance. And how everyone is written and directed. And the guy actually portraying the main villain of this film. The guy behind all these atrocities going down in Burma in this film. Was actually one of the Karen refugees. One of the guys involved with this revolution. Who had been incarcerated and abused. And all these different things. Along with family and friends. But he went into this role, a role that he obviously could not empathize with whatsoever because he had been on the horrible side of this violence, but stepped into it to kind of hopefully potentially bring more emphasis onto the entire situation going on in his homeland here, despite the fact that possibly a lot of his family could be incarcerated for him portraying this role. It's certainly a courageous type of thing to do that, to kind of take on this burden or whatnot, take on this role and bring that certain level of authenticity to the situation there and bring that kind of perspective from the other side to just be very truthful about the, the horrible things that have been going on. He did a fantastic job because the film pulls no punches and so he's a really good actor in that type of regard. Really good stuff and just like overall the entire cast is just fantastic. And the characters have depth and they have dimension, they have emotions, they have connections and layers to them. That just everything just comes together so well because you got such good actors involved. And two franchise mainstays who are very notable by their absence in this film. First off, is actor Richard Crenn, who had passed away in January of 2003, and composer Jerry Goldsmith, who passed away in July of 2004. And there was ideas that maybe potentially recast the role of Trotman to keep him into the, the story of the film, but Stallone ultimately decided that he would honor Crenn's memory and have the character of Trotman pass away in the same time that credit passed away in real life and of course with Jerry Goldsmith being gone having made amazing scores for this franchise at this point they brought in Brian Tyler who had been such a, a studier of Goldsmith's work such a major fan of it that was so enthusiastic to come to this film use Goldsmith's scores and use those themes it's a long road it's so absolutely vital to the the overall sonic emotional quality of this character. I cannot imagine a Rambo film without that music being in there. It's such a direct core to the inroads to the, the soul of this character that I just cannot imagine any other way. And having that in there and having it kind of jump in there just a little bit in certain places and bookend the entire film at the beginning credits, end credits, just brings such a great quality to it. And what Brian Tarr brought as original compositions really just impresses so much that he did so many good things with the action cues, getting all this good percussion in there to really kind of give it that, a little bit of a jungle vibe and stuff like that to just have this rapid fire type of impact in the film, just have this thrilling excitement kind of inject itself into the suspenseful and thrilling sequences in the film, but never forgetting the little emotional moments that the film needs to have, that he created new themes for like the character of Sarah, to have a little bit of a musical motif in the certain moments for her to kind of just accentuate those moments and have those points in time where the emotion takes hold in the entire thing. So he was just so absolutely vital and just absolutely just so grateful that those themes got brought back in this thing and have someone who respected Goldsmith's work so much to have that and honor that so much. And of course, I was so thrilled when it was announced that Stallone brought him back to do Last Blood. So we'll see how that turns out so well and very shortly here, but the, 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 the action of this film is just insane. I mean, we've had a, a wide variety of different style of action. I mean, the first one was very rough and gritty and just very exciting type of stuff. Second film got way over the top. Third film got a little bit kind of a, a melding of the two. It kind of had gritty action, but still had kind of 
over the top set pieces in a certain way, but it still had a certain gravity to itself. This one goes as grisly as you possibly can imagine. It is absolutely graphic and gory in such a, a, a mind blowing type of way that it's not an action film for a light sort of audience in a certain way because Stone was kind of looking at because I mean, they had $50 million, but $50 million wasn't the same as it was 20 years ago. And so looking at it, it's like, okay. I've got this huge crew. We got a lot of things going on. We're shooting in different international locations. I got to stretch this thing in a certain way to make the film as impactful as possible. So we decided let's make the action as graphic as it possibly can be. And they're pretty surprised that the film came back with an R rating. They never had to resubmit it or cut it down in any type of way for the MPAA, which again was a little bit of a change from 20 years ago when the franchise was around last. Or MPA was really kind of leaning into a lot of graphic type of stuff at the time. This film just pushes it right off the edge. And it's just, it's it's a thing to really kind of digest very much. That it's a film that's not trying to glorify the violence in any type of way. It's very much soaking you into the horrifying reality that's going on in this area of the world and everything. That I like so much how the film utilizes the handheld camera movements. But still has a certain cinematic style about itself. It doesn't utilize that sort of shaky cam nonsense that was getting very prevalent at the time. Someone was a very seasoned filmmaker to know how to stage the action, how to get the geography put together in these sequences. Whereas when they're sneaking into the entire campground type of stuff and they're trying to rescue the hostages, all this type of stuff, and you understand the geography where every character is moving throughout the entire camp. You understand these things. You know everyone's purpose. You know how things are moving about. You know where everything is placed and even when you get further into the third act of the film where you got splintered off groups or whatnot and they're trying to move this way and move that way and trying to draw the, the enemy forces into a certain place you understand where everyone is moving and how the geography of the storytelling is moving forward it's so very well done it's so perfectly put together in that way that I just feel it's so refreshing to know it's in 2008 when that, that, that silly, shaky cam, quick cut nonsense was going on, Sloan just had no, no mind towards that whatever. He knew how to make an action film, and he just put it together so very well with his, his entire fantastic crew here between the cinematography and everyone else was going on to make all the, the blood and all the squibs, all these different things going on, all the pyrotechnics going on, everything just came together in such a beautiful package with the editing as well. Everything just comes together so powerfully in these sequences that you feel just the gut-wrenching feeling of these sequences where everyone's getting ripped apart by all this gunfire and all this type of stuff just so you feel the peril of the film everything is going to be completely laid to waste if they don't pull it together and get through this entire situation and just like i love getting into that climax there and it's like you still have Rambo as that character that you know him as, that he slips in between the forces, all these types of things silently and pulls up and just starts ripping people apart. It's just a fantastic type of stuff. Just again, they maintain that quality of the character, the, the combat savvy that he has moving through these situations, moving through these environments, knowing how to sneak up on the enemy and all this type of stuff. It's so very much a strong sense of continuity with the character. I cannot, I cannot praise that enough about what Stallone has done with this character up to that point. They just, just continue to maintain that integrity and quality with the character. I just like so much what they do in this whole thing. Just everything just comes together in such an unrelenting, tension-filled, suspenseful type of package here that feels so much in tune with the first film, with his own story, his own dynamics of everything going on within the soul and the heart and the mind of Rambo there and everything. So it's like. They put together a really good story in this whole thing. I like the fact that it is a story that you're seeing this character after again. He's been in this sort of a seclusion or whatnot for like 20 years and not really caring. He, he doesn't go out in the, the wider world. He doesn't invest himself in anything because he's been so turned against everything. That he has all these things in his past and whatnot where he tried to fight for his country. He tried to fight for his friends. tried for all the stuff. And now he's just kind of like a lone man, internalized, and doesn't really want to stretch himself out to care about anything because it doesn't seem like anything he ever does really makes that big of an impact. But you see at the end of the film, and especially because there were two different cuts to this film. The original theatrical cut, and then there was an extended cut later on where Stolen kind of rethunk a couple of things. He really thought 
that he was a little bit too rushed in making certain decisions, getting the thing into the theatrical cut and the release of the film, that he added more moments of heart, a little bit more humanity into the character in certain moments of the film. He kind of laid that sort of sensitivity back into the moments of the film where we start digging into the characters and the motivations and the d deeper psychological layers of the character of Rambo there and everything. So there are certain lines of dialogue or certain scenes that got a little bit trimmed out here and there for the theatrical version to make it much more of a, a leaner, meaner action film. But obviously with the extended cut, he went back and changed his mind about certain things and we kind of expanded the film out a little bit more to give it a little bit more depth of the character. And one of the best things is definitely at the very end of the film, we're in the theatrical cut, after everything's been laid to waste and all the enemy forces are down and uh, Sarah's reconnecting with Michael there and all this type of stuff and they have this little wave off the Rambo to kind of thank him for what he did for them. The actual cut, he, he's a little bit more colder to the entire situation. He kind of just sees it and turns away and then you fade off to where he moves off back to Arizona towards his father's ranch. In the extended cut of the film, they actually had Rambo acknowledge them with that little wave and it just opens the character off a little further that you see that he breaks open a little bit further. The entire extended cut really just opens the character up further for a lot of the audience and a lot of the characters and to see a little bit more towards the character himself. I think it's just a superior version of the film that just doesn't really add in that much more stuff in terms of graphicness, but adds more character in the film. I think that's so very much important, the character of Rambo here, to see a lot more of the depth and get more of the evolution of the character to earn him going back home after all this stuff has gone down, do you see that he's kind of reconnected with his own heart and see where he's going to land next? So it's just really good stuff. That's such a, a film that has all the right elements for a Rambo film. I still think First Blood is superior. I think it's a fantastic, one of the finest action films ever put together, but this is one of the, the best follow ups to that original film that they've done up to this point. I think it's just a fantastic film that, again, it gets. The depth and the quality of the character is so very right. But guys, your thoughts about it, because I have reviewed the previous three films in the franchise. You can check out the playlist that will be linked at the end of the video here. And check those reviews out. So, like, I still absolutely love this franchise. I think it's a fantastic piece of work. Even again, part two gets a little silly and a little cartoonish. There's still a fantastic things to really enjoy with the action and the characters, stuff like that, and the performances all together. And of course, the scores all across the board, whereas Goldsmith or now Brian Tyler, these are fantastic pieces of work. So, thanks so much, guys, for checking things out. If you enjoyed the video, always get the thumbs up. I always terribly appreciate that. And as always, the Patreon, if you want to get further incentive, if you want to get things early before the release here on YouTube, you can sign up there for a couple bucks a month. You get some commentaries early, download versions of the commentaries, you get early access to reviews. And I'm getting a few new goals up to the, onto the page and whatnot that if I certain, reach certain levels of pledges and stuff like that, I'll be doing special videos that will take a lot of research, a lot of time. But if you want to know more about it, check it out on the Patreon page. So I'll be back very soon with a review of Rambo Last Blood. So thanks so much, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.